In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The large catechism says, If your faith and trust be right, then is your God also true. And on the other hand, if your trust be false and wrong, then you have not the true God, for these two belong together, faith and God. That now I say, upon which you set your heart and put your trust, is properly your God. So Trinity Sunday, where we hear and confess of the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we just confessed in the Athanasian Creed. Not the God of our own thinking or imagination, to be clear. Not the God of our own logic and reason. That'd be a false God, an idol. But God gives himself to us and reveals himself in his word. Rather than sit above his word, pretending ourselves to be God and believing only what to us seems believable, faith hears what God says and receives it, believes it, trusts it. Through the Holy Spirit, we hear what God gives through his word and we believe when we confess and when we confess, we're saying back to him what he's spoken already to us. So we hear of the Trinity because Jesus speaks it to us. He gives it to us. Matthew 28, as we heard in the Gospel reading, baptizing into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When the Lord puts his name on something, he makes it his own. It's his. In the beginning... As we heard earlier, everything was His. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit created all things, including man and woman. It was all the Lord's. Genesis 1.26, God says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, over the birds, of the heavens, the livestock, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him, male and female he created. So the fish, the birds, all of creation, all the animals, it was a gift to the man and the woman. It belonged though to God. Because all things in the man and woman were his, ultimately, always. Then enters sin. Man and woman no longer receiving gifts as God gives them, but they would take them as they want. So then sin and even the first temptation begins in unhearing or unfaith or unbelief or not hearing what God gives, not receiving what God says. So man and woman not wanting to be creatures but themselves God. The result is the man and woman <coughs> bringing themselves and all creation into sin. Their God then is not their creator but it's now a false god, an idol. The great deceiver, the tempter, the liar, not the one who bestows life, but the one who brings sin, sickness, and death. And those swallowed up in sin and death under the lie and the power of Satan and the demons who live in fear. The one true God, the Lord of life and the creator, loves those people. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he speaks a promise to this first man and woman, fallen in sin, a promise to save, to redeem through the seed of the woman. Apart from the efforts, efforts of our own sinful, makeshift, wannabe good works, to redeem all those who are cursed through sin. So God gives Abraham a promise. He said, through your seed, or through you, I'm going to bless the whole world. And then he calls Israel, the descendants of Abraham, out from among the nations to bring them to a land he promises. And he gives them a covenant, and he puts his name on them. The Lord told, told Aaron and the priests to put his name on them. That's how they'd be his. So in Numbers 6.27, we hear... The Lord said, put my name on the people of Israel, and I will bless them. How are Aaron and the priests to put the Lord's name on people? 
speaking a blessing, a promise. So Numbers 6.24, the Lord said, you shall say to them. So God gives a word and says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The name of the Lord three times. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So even today when the Lord gathers us, his people, to his name, the first thing we hear is a pastor turning and saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the name gathering us together from whom we receive every good gift. The name of the Lord who alone is holy and yet gathers us together to give us his holiness. To turn us or repent us and give us the forgiveness of sins. So the Lord's service is not us beginning in the name as if it were something we were performing or doing. But it's the Lord giving his name to you once again. Blessing those who belong to him. And we have the certainty that we belong to him. Right here in Matthew 28, as we heard a couple times already. Make disciples, Jesus says. He doesn't say by teaching them to be really good people. <laughs> Make disciples by having them do exactly what Jesus would do. It's impossible. The good news is that he makes disciples by baptizing into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe or to keep or to guard or to trust, in, in trust all that I've handed over to you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So the Lord puts his name on you and makes you his own. And in his name he gives all that he has. Because God is never separated from his name. Where his name is, that's where he is. And so the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have all that the Father did. And so loving the world that he gives Jesus, the only begotten Son, as the Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. All that he does when he raises Jesus from the dead, after the th three days in the tomb, for you. All that the Father's done to ransom sinners and to exalt his Son, he gives you by giving his name in baptism. And all that the Son did at his baptism, where he was clothed and baptized into the sins of every sinner, and named as God's Lamb to take away all sin, so that the Son did on the cross. What he did on the cross to atone for the sins of the world, all that he does by descending into hell and declaring to the demons that they're defeated and hold no more accusation against you or your children, and all that he does in walking out of the tomb alive, all that he does in his ascension, where he now intercedes to his Father for you and for me and for our children, he gives that to you in baptism through giving his name. And the Holy Spirit... All that he does in being sent forth from the Father and the Son to give gifts from heaven. All that he does to have the gospel proclaimed over all the earth. To gather sinners everywhere, all across the world, to the place of the certainty of the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus. All that he does that sinners may eat and drink for the forgiveness of their sins. The very body and blood of our Lord Jesus. All that he does to bring your prayers and my prayers before the heavenly throne. All of it the Holy Spirit gives to you by putting his name on you in holy baptism. Well, who, who gets this baptism? Is it for certain people? Is it for only Western people or Eastern people? Or they, no, that, that doesn't exist. That's stuff we make up. All nations, Jesus says. All. Every single one of them. Nobody's excluded. Jew, Greek, male, female, slave, free, old, young. The name given in baptism is for everyone. And the name is the Lord's to give. It's not something for us to decide or choose. But thanks be to God. He's, if he's put his name on you in holy baptism, he said, you belong 
to him. And to belong to him means to belong to the Father and of the Son and to the Holy Spirit forever. Amen.